Hello and welcome to the Red Zone, the tight end analysis podcast. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. Talking about some of your top plays for tight end. And of course, you mentioned here a couple guys who would be good plays or some good plays are no longer good plays, potentially. Um, Rob Gronkowski practiced today, um, which no one really expected, which would mean Scott Chandler kind of out. And Chandler last week, really until that late touchdown, kind of didn't do much anyway. So um, you mentioned that kind of takes him off your radar there. Yeah, probably just an area I'm going to avoid altogether. I don't really want to pay up for Gronkowski this week, even though he's always the top option when he plays. But just too many other positions I'd rather pay up for. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, a couple other guys to mention here real quick that you kind of went over. Um, One of the guys we'll mention later, so we'll get to him. But uh, Gary Barnage was limited, but he's been really the most consistent target in the Browns offense when he's been healthy. Um, Charles Clay... Um, is a guy who is a good GBP play if he goes and he's healthy, but he's also a guy that we've seen with a really low floor as well. So, uh, um, And the other guy, Heath Miller. We saw Jesse James last week against the Colts catch three passes in a row early yeah. and then not a whole lot else after that. I mean, just because it's a big, strong, white tight end doesn't mean that it's uh, Heath Miller. And uh, so he, he's kind of stepped in that role, but Roethlisberger has so many other options that I mean, it's enticing to go with a uh, Pittsburgh tight end for cheap, but I just not not a huge fan though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just avoid that area altogether. Yeah, exactly. I'm um, starting off here with Greg Olson for the Panthers, elite play, of course, facing off against Atlanta. As you know, the whole story by now. Um, Carolina undefeated, still kind of waiting for them to play a good team and see how they match up with them because they really haven't yet. But Atlanta is not that team, so you can go ahead and fire up your Greg Olson and. Cam Newton and everyone else, but um, it, like you mentioned, though, Atlanta's actually been pretty good against the tight end, but this tight end QB duo has been among the best, if not the best, non-Gronkowski Brady in the entire league. Yeah, I mean, you're just looking for a safe uh, volume guy here, and you know he has over 100 targets on the season, averaging just a shade under 9 per game, and uh, yeah, Football Outsiders has him 8th against tight ends, but they have a lot of the 13th most fantasy points to opposing tight ends, so still just kind of an average matchup. It's not one that really keeps me away from Wilson. I just think with tight end being kind of weak this this uh, week 14, I'm not really not really looking to um, you know pay up, but Olsen is the top option. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. And then uh, a value play, a guy who finally returned last week after speculation for seemingly months and months that maybe it's this week he's going to return, then he didn't. Um, Austin Safarian Jenkins for Tampa Bay didn't play a ton of snaps last week. And that's exactly what you mentioned in the article there. But um, his DraftKings price in particular, uh, $2,700, is kind of one of those. You plug him in, you hope he's in on the right snaps, the red zone snaps, and he gets his targets and his red zone chances. And, I mean, he could pay off in a really big way um, at that really cheap tag. Yeah, and I mean, he only played just 21 uh, plays last week and did see six targets in those 21 plays from Winston. And um, I mean, the guy's six six. He's just a monster red zone target. And really, Tampa has three red zone targets they could really look at. But um, toss him in for 2,700 against the Saints, the worst defense in the league. Um, you really can't argue with it. But FanDuel, I'll probably look at another cheaper option, which we'll talk about here next. Yeah, uh, Zach Miller, obviously, I'm sure you've seen this week Martellus Bennett now on the IR. A big loss for them in the passing game, blocking as well. Um, as we know, Ben had a really good blocking tight end. But Zach Miller, a guy who did take an 80 yarder to the house a couple weeks ago, um, certainly you're not chasing that or ever expecting him to do that again. But um, kind of by default, there's really no number two um, it's outside of the running backs, I guess we should say. So there's all Sean Jeffrey, and then there's a bunch of kind of role players at that, that, uh, wide receiver. Then you've got Zach Miller going to step into the Martellus Bennett role, which was a pretty a fairly high volume role uh, when Bennett was healthy. So for cheap, Zach Miller, another one of those guys sub three K on DraftKings that you can uh, throw in there this week. Yeah, I mean he's kind of. I mean even though Bennett's been kind of limited and out this past couple of weeks, um, you know Miller's seen nineteen targets over the last four weeks. Um, his four touchdowns in the last five games, which is kind of surprising. Remember that San Diego game he hauled in that great one handed catch where Cutler really fired it in there. Um, I mean the guy can play. Um, you know if you're looking for a really cheap. Uh, tight end on Fanduel, he's the guy, and probably more of a contrarian pivot from uh, Seferi and Jenkins at the same price uh, yeah. on DK. Yeah, I like that call out. And then next up, the guy who's finally healthy, um, the guy who got paid mostly because of Peyton Manning, but also because he's a big target, uh, Julius Thomas for the Jags. Obviously, 
Alan Hearns looks like he should be back for this week, which really doesn't, I don't think, hurt Julius Thomas at all because there's just so much to go around, plenty of options. You really can't key on one guy. And if you're going to key on one guy, it's not going to be Julius Thomas. It's going to be Alan Robinson trying to stop him. So if anything, that may just help Julius Thomas and his potential this week facing the Colts team that um, I know you as a Colts fan, I'll be nice with my adjectives here, but they were just not good last no. week. Uh, no, I'll say I'll say it. They were awful. I mean, they were just <laughs> terrible. Um, you got to look at Jacksonville. I mean, pretty high volume passing attack, and hopefully Hasselbeck is in this game just because he could, he'll be able to keep things close and keep Jacksonville from not just hanging the ball off to yell in the entire game. But um, you know, look at Thomas, great GPP play. He's still pretty cheap. Um, touchdown last week, but didn't have the yards. And you know, yards is probably the biggest disappointment for him this season. You know, he's only been over thirty yards receiving three times this year, but does have two uh, hundred plus yard games. So we know the upside with him. Yeah, I mean, at his price with his upside, I definitely like that call a lot. Um, next up, Tyler Eifert already had his conversation with Santa as a, the article that you sent me sat on his lap and asked for a Super Bowl, and then down the little <laughs> subtle comment down at the bottom in the article saying. Maybe he should ask for a healthy neck to make sure he can play this week. But was back at practice. Looks like he is at least on track to being possible to play. I'm, I haven't seen anything official, but I think he's still technically questionable right now. But definitely going to be a big boost to the Bengals' offense in this uh, this game against the Steelers if he can go. And if he can, I mean, we've seen massive upside from him all season, leading tight ends and touchdowns. And um, we know Andy Dalton certainly relies on him, especially in the red zone. And so that Pittsburgh secondary, certainly nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like I I like I every week he plays on GPPs. Really touchdown reliant, but uh, he's the you know league leading and receiving touchdowns. So being touchdown reliant's not too bad with him. Um, targets, I mean, he averages about six point two per game, so not great, but not bad either. And you know, looking at him, he's just the big red zone guy. And you know, at his price, he does have multi touchdown upside. Um, I think he's a guy who just comes in as pretty low owned each week yeah and i mean hopefully he gets his wish for the super bowl championship he's not going to get his wish to win the fiesta bowl over the Ohio State buckeyes sorry to tell you jason that's not gonna yeah. happen yeah we'll have, to, we'll have to get a bet for that one <laughs> we will we'll get an avatar bet or something yeah i've got one of those pending for this week with Bengals steelers so I'll, I'll have to i'll have to check in my my avatar bet book and get one for uh the notre dame ohio state game yeah. there as well but Either way, that'll wrap things up here for us for this week for the tight end analysis. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out the rest of our great content at dailyfantasycafe.com.